Well, hello, class. Normally, I greet you in person with a good morning or good afternoon, but I'm not certain what time you're watching this, so I'll just say hello. My name is Scott Fernandez, and I'm excited this fall to be teaching one of the very first classes ever offered via television at St. Clair County Community College. My colleague, Linda Flickinger, taught the first televised course in the winter semester. So we've learned a few things about how to improve on the concept since then. First of all, thanks to the City of Port Huron for allowing us to broadcast these classes using public access television on Channel 8. Of course, that means you must have a cable television subscription to watch the class. But in the past few years, the city has greatly expanded the areas that have cable, cable available. So today, in 1975, there are now several hundred houses with cable television. Now, I know it's not cheap. The monthly subscription rate is $7. But when you consider that you get crystal clear reception of as many as 10 channels, it's well worth it. Now, this class will be broadcast twice a day at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The course can be completed completely at home with the exception of two tests which will be held on campus. Please note that you must be registered for the course to get credit. At the college's current tuition rate of $10 per credit per credit hour, this means the course costs $30 plus $17.50 for the textbook. Now about the course. I'll be providing an overview of United States history from Reconstruction to the present. We'll focus on cultural, social, political, and economic changes uh, that occurred during this time. We're not going to just memorize dates, names, and places. Well, that does give us the structure of history. It's more important that we analyze and understand complex issues that confront us today. By the end of the course, I hope you'll have an understanding of how our cultural and political institutions and heritage has, have influenced the problems we face today in the 70s, including the economic recession, our energy crisis, and the political scandals like Watergate. Now, why is it important to know history? The philosopher George Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It's my hope that by knowing more about our history and how it affects our current cultural and political institutions, your generation can make better decisions that will allow our country to avoid making the mistakes of the past. Imagine a world where Americans are no longer worried about the economy, where there's plenty of cheap, clean energy, and where our, where our governmental leaders all work together for everyone's benefit. These goals are reachable, and I hope to see them happen in my lifetime, even if I'm still teaching here at the college in 2013. So how do I plan to teach this course over television? Well, like a regular class, most TV set class sessions will include lectures. Lectures will complement, but not just repeat the textbook readings. Of course, you won't be able to talk directly to me, which is unfortunate. The, the technology to allow you to talk back directly to me over the television hasn't been perfected yet, though there have been some experiments in Columbus, Ohio um, that do look promising. Perhaps someday there will be a way for students to record their own films and make them available to the rest of the class could be called uh, UTV or something like that. Now, that's a good idea. I think I'll have to write that one down in a few minutes. Okay, today or, or tonight's lecture, or our lesson, is on the Gilded Age. Um, Mark Twain called it the Gilded Age, uh, called the late 19th century the Gilded Age. Uh, the late 19th century was a period of greed and guile, of robber barons, unscrupulous speculators, and corporate pirates of shady business practices, scandal-plagued politics, and vulgar display. During the Gilded Age, every man was a potential Andrew Carnegie. And Americans who achieved wealth celebrated it as never before. 
One popular Manhattan restaurant regularly hosted formal horseback dinners. Mrs. Stuyvesant Fish once threw a dinner party to honor her dog, who arrived wearing a $15,000 diamond collar. Now, while the rich wore diamonds, many Americans wore rags. Millions of American families had incomes well below the poverty line. Rural Americans and new immigrants flooded into the urban areas. Americans had sewing machines, phonographs, invented by Thomas Edison in 1877, by the way, skyscrapers, and even electric lights. Yet most people labored in the shadow of poverty. Much of the nation's wealth was concentrated in just a small percentage of industrial owners and investors. Fortunately, the rise of the middle class after World War II alleviated much of that economic in inequity. Oh, well, you know, I, I see that I've been talking, you know, for quite some time. We did learn last semester that students of a televised class need breaks, just like viewers on, viewers on TV, dramas, or comedies. So I'm going to take a brief break. During the break, enjoy a selection from the saucer, a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta that was very popular a century ago. And as they say on TV, I'll be right back. <laughs> 